Good day, everyone. I'm Derek Tixay, and I'm here to present the first part of our research study titled Water Quality Assessment Using Microcontroller-Based Wireless Sensor Network in Aquaculture Consideration in Samuel River. Chapter 1, Problem Statement and Introduction. We all know that water is one of the most important resources in the world. Therefore, as consumers, it is our duty to make sure that its quality is being maintained especially for the fishermen since they depend their living on aquatic organisms which live underwater. Statement of the problem. As we all can see, there are a lot of water bodies around us, especially here in our country. But what we do not know is that on some of it or most of it, water quality continues to degrade. This may put us to a higher risk if we do not take action. The general objective of this study is to create a device for water quality measurement for aquaculture applications in Samuel River. Now, to be more specific, this device is intended to help provide three water quality parameters such as temperature, pH level, and turbidity of Samuel River. These parameters are to be compared with the standards set by the Department of Environment and Natural Resources for aquaculture applications. Significance of the study. This study provides the three said water quality parameters which can be advantageous for the fishermen who owns fish cages in rivers. This can help them decide whether they will be providing a suitable environment for the fishes or not. This study can also be used for future reference for researchers that will focus their study on water quality. Scope and limitations. This device is made up of a system of sensors that will be controlled by a microcontroller and will be mounted on a floating device. Some limitations are seen in the study. One of them is the reliability of this device when it comes to drinking water. Another one is that the turbidity can be affected a little with the current's velocity in the river because the aggregates being transported. Lastly, the turbidity sensor provides a measurement in the unit of voltage and there is no direct conversion of voltage to milligram per liter. Next is chapter two, review of related literature. I have chosen these three articles because these are the most related to our study. First is the Turbidity and Temperature Patterns in a Reserva and its Primary Tributary from Robotic Monitoring, Implications for Managing the Quality of Withdrawals. This study seeks to analyze the turbidity and temperature patterns of withdrawals, releases, and outflows of reservoirs or lakes by the use of a robotic water quality monitoring network. The objective is to observe if there will be any transformation in the water quality due to the change of season, occurrence of high turbidity, or contaminant spill. The results can also be very useful in managing the water quality and providing alternatives for treatment. Another article is the self-calibration water level measurement using an interdigital capacitive sensor. The researchers of this study was able to introduce an interdigital capacitive sensor that has high linear sensitivity, good repeatability, low cost, low energy, and simple installation. The interdigital capacitive sensor consists of a printed circuit board or a PCB that serves as a basis for the design of the water level measurement system. And last is the water quality monitoring system using Zigbee-based sensor network. The researchers in this study was able to create a low cost and easy to maintain system of sensors for water quality monitoring. These water quality parameters include pH, temperature and turbidity. And the use of a wireless sensor network was also presented in this study. Now to continue chapter three, here is Mr. Leanda. Good day everyone. Today, I will discuss Chapter 3, Theoretical Considerations. In this chapter, I will present the knowledge and formulas necessary to support the ideas related to the study. This table shows the beneficial use of each water, which the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, also known as the DENR, has classified. The Class AA, which is Public Water Class 1, intended use primarily for waters having watersheds which are uninhabited and otherwise protected. While Class A, public water supply Class 2, is for sources of water supply that will require complete treatment. Next is the Class B, recreational water Class 1, is for recreation like boating and swimming. The Class C, recreational water Class 2, is for boating, fishing, and other related activities. Lastly, the Class D is for navigable waters such as lake, river, swamp, and oceans. pH level is measuring parameter of alkalinity or acidity, 
the range is 0 to 14, where normal water has a 7 pH level. The DENR sets an acidity standard shown in the table. Temperature standard. In this table, shows the standard values of temperature corresponds to the water body classification given to the, by the DENR. Turbidity standards. <clears throat> In this table, shows the value of turbidity standards given by the DENR, showing water body classifications total suspended solids. Power source requirements. These formulas are necessary in battery selection. This, form, this formula for electrical energy of battery, which we use in choosing our battery voltage. This is the equation for energy consumed. This equation helps us to determine the battery life during trials. Winch design computation. In designing the winch, it is important to identify the torque required for lifting a certain weight to identify the motor to be used. This formula is used in choosing the stepper motor while this one is used in obtaining the minimum drum length. Pump flow rate computation. It is necessary to have a computation for the pump flow rate in selection of the pump. This is the equation for volumetric flow rate. Well, this one is the equation for the mass flow rate, which is both used in selecting the pump. Statistical treatment. This, this is the formula for mean, which is used in analyzing the data for the water quality measurement. The next one is the standard deviation formula, which is used in quantifying the number of variation in each set of data. And lastly, ANOVA test for repeated measures one-way analysis of variance or ANOVA was to be used to compare any differences between different sampling type and sampling depths. In continuation of our presentation, this chapter is about the construction of robot and how the quality of water is going to be observed. In this part, I will show the methodology flowchart of our robot. The next is the designing of the robot. The designing part of our robot is divided into three parts. Identifying the necessary tasks to be done by the robot, computation, and designing the 3D printed part. The, the necessary tasks to be done are collect water sample in the container, measure the temperature, turbidity, and pH level, and get the values through text. The next one is computation. The computation was discussed on chapter 3. The next is designing the 3D printed parts. The first part is the winch drum. The winch drum is designed to have a conical cross section for the water to flow through. The next one is the water sample container. The container is designed with a flat floor surface, but the three corner away from the discharge hole are raised so that the water will flow to the discharge hole. The next is water sample container cover. The cover is designed to have a pore hose for pH, turbidity, water level sensor, and the panel to be mounted. The last one is the suction nozzle. It is a conical shaped tube where the suction of water happens. A screen filter is mounted to the larger hole, and the smaller hole is where the hose is connected. To continue chapter 4, here is Mr. Valenzuela. Good day, everyone. My name is Rodin Valenzuela, and I'm here for the continuation of the chapter four. So procurement of components. So the figure below are the electronic components used for the robot. This includes sensors, motors, pump, and microcontroller. So producing the circuit board. So the circuit board connects the electronic components. Below is the schematic diagram for the circuit board. Programming and calibration of the sensors. These are the sensors that are needed to be calibrated. So temperature sensor. Temperature sensor readings are compared with the analog thermometer reading. If there is a difference, the code is adjusted. Cooled and heated water are also tested to check the calibration. pH sensor is inserted in a pH for buffer solution. If the sensor reading is not 4, the code is adjusted. pH 7 buffer solution is also tested to check the calibration. Turbidity sensor has no calibration method. 
we just check if the sensor is working by getting readings from three water samples with different cleanliness. Water level sensor is calibrated by gathering the average height of water by con in the container in five trials. The average height is inserted in the code. Here are the 3D printed parts for our robot. So assembly of the robot. So here are the steps in assembling the robot. It includes the connection of components in the circuit board, placing it in a glass case for waterproofing purposes, fastening the machine parts in a wooden platform to be easily transported, and connecting the robot in the floating device. Here are the tasks done by the robot in, the, in an actual test. So, text start to the robot to begin the process. The winch transports the suction nozzle one meter beneath the surface of the water. The pump transports water from the one meter depth to the container. The pump stops once the water level sensor detects that the container is full. The pH sensor, turbidity sensor, and temperature sensor measures the water quality of the water sample in the container. Ten values for each parameters are sent to the mobile phone through text. The water sample is discharged using a servo motor. Same steps are done for depths 1.3 and 1.6 meters. And after the test, for all three depths, the winch is transported, transports the suction nozzle above the surface of the water. So initial test, it includes the repeatability and consistency test. Repeatability test is where five different trials in same water is done. The data from the test should have similar results. Consistency test is where the sensor measures continuously. The data should have similar results. So for the actual underwater quality measurement, four times of the day are selected in the water quality measurement of the river. There are also five sampling points. These are plotted in the figure below. And Beside it is its coordinates. Analysis of the data. One way analysis of variance is used to identify if the time and depth affects the measurements of the pH level, temperature, and turbidity. The software Vasar Stats was used. Chapter 5, Data and Results. For the pH sensor, these are the results gathered. The values are within the plus minus 0.2 tolerance, which proves that the sensor is calibrated properly. In the calibration of the temperature sensor, these are the results gathered. The values of the sensor is similar to the values of the thermometer, which proves that the sensor is calibrated properly. For the turbidity sensor, it can be observed that the clean the cleaner the water, the higher its voltage reading. For the water, for the water level sensor, the average reading is 305.8. It is inserted in the code. For the stepper motor, the gathered time is converted to number of steps using this formula. The number of steps is inserted in the code. For the servo motor, The average discharge time gathered is 13.6 seconds. 15 seconds is inserted in the code to have a little allowance. So these are the data gathered from the consistency test. It shows that it has a low value of standard deviation, which proves that the sensor readings are consistent. For the repeatability test, here are the results. It shows that it also has a low standard deviation, which proves that the sensor readings are also consistent. So to continue chapter five, here is Mr. Abad. Good day. I am Dane Mark Abad, and I will continue the representation on our thesis. So, actual water quality measurement, which is a compilation of all the measured water quality in different sampling points of different sampling times and sampling depths to get them ready for the ANOVA. Each measured water quality has their own table and graphical representation. So here is the actual test data averages for temperature at 1 meter. Each data below the sampling times 
are the average measured water quality of the 10 trials made for each sampling point. Other data on different sampling depths such as 1.3 meters and 1.6 meters can be seen on subchapter 5.5. So here's the graphical representation of the previous table. And here's the actual test data averages for turbidity at 1 meter. Its graphical representation for pH level at 1 meter and its graphical representation. These next tables are for comparison of the measured water quality on different depths of different sampling points taken in the same sampling time, wherein the average of 10 trials per depth were put into account. Other data on different times can be seen on Appendix M. So here is the actual test data averages for temperature at 10 am and its graphical representation for turbidity at 10 am and its graphical representation for pH level at 10 am and its graphical representation. Statistical test on data. This is the application of ANOVA on the gathered data to determine if there is a significant difference among the sampling times and sampling depths. So the F values of the ANOVA test results should not be greater than their critical value and the P value should not be less than the confidence level of 5%. Otherwise, there is a significant difference. The critical values were taken from the F values for 5% confidence level, which can be seen on Appendix H, with the help of degrees of freedom of treatment between groups and error that will be shown in each ANOVA test results. With the noted critical values, the researchers compared it with the different ANOVA test results. So for temperature at 1 meter at different sampling times, its ANOVA test result shows that its F value is not greater than the critical value of 3.49 and its P value is not less than the confidence level of 5% which means there is no significant difference. So for the temperature at 10 am at different sampling depths, its F value is not also greater than its critical value of 4.46 and its p-value is not less than the confidence level of 5%, which means there is no significant difference. But if you can check on our appendix M for temperature at 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., it shows that it has a significant difference due to its f-value being larger than the critical value of 4.46 and its p-value being less than the confidence level of 5%. But for other water quality at different sampling times, different sampling depths, there is no significant difference because their F value is not greater than their critical value and their P value is not less than the confidence level of 5%. So for comparison to standard levels, the DENR has a standard level on temperature that ranges from 25 degrees Celsius to 31 degrees Celsius. But on the measured range, it shows that it ranges from 29.794 degrees Celsius to 31.226 degrees Celsius. For the standard levels for pH level, it ranges from 6.5 to 9, while on measured range, it ranges from 7.127 to 7.463. Chapter 6, Conclusion and Recommendation The researchers were able to design and fabricate a device that can measure deep water quality and relay the data gathered wirelessly via SMS. With the application of ANOVA, the researchers can prove that there was no significant difference on the water qualities for sampling times, but there was a significant difference on the temperature for the sampling depth. The researchers compared the measured water quality with the water quality standards of DNR, and it was found out to be within the range of values of water quality standards for class C which is specified for agriculture and fishing. So for recommendation, a philometric turbidity sensor is recommended because it is more reliable and the data it produces can be compared with the water quality standards of DNR which is in the unit of milligram per liter. Cooling fans and battery with high capacity is also recommended for longer duration of tests so it can conduct different tests in different days weeks or months to see if there is a pattern in the changes of the water quality. Determining significant changes in the temperature, pH level, and turbidity can also be known by testing depths that have larger distances between them. Addition of measurement of BOD and COD is also suggested to have wider range in testing water quality.